I got this impression that I went somewhere in the woods and I had some internet issues. Simply because I never saw the car before it landed in my schedule. But even if I miss something, we should drive it and tell you what this Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport is all about. Every single week you can see newest cars, motorcycles, gear, parts. So if you like our channel, make sure to subscribe, put the thumbs up and share this video on your social media. We're not sponsored by anyone, so every single week you do see honest reviews. And in order to keep it this way, you can share this video on your social media, that will help our channel to grow. And getting back to this Atlas Cross, my name is Dennis, this is for Life Test Drive, shall we? Let's get it straight, our line, even with more sporty look, is not that fast. It's still a larger SUV that drives like a bigger Atlas, and we can't find anything sporty about this car driving some twisty roads. When it comes to design, when it comes to looks, we all can agree, uh, this one looks pretty similar to Porsche Macan. Bigger body, lower roof, and in this case, nothing sporty, just style. Building your own? Well, good luck with that. You have 18 trim levels to choose. 18! It starts from 30,545 and you can easily boost the price over 50k by adding options here and there. Also, when you're gonna be deciding on the color, uh, tell me please, why the pure gray color is an option? It costs 395 and usually when you have some pretty color, uh, let's say like this red, you're supposed to pay some extra for a good looking unique color, unique paint job. What's cool about gray? I'm actually happy that I'm driving the red one, simply because the VW offers only seven colors and all of them black, white, gray. When it comes to engine, you have two options. First one is two liter, four cylinder turbocharged engine that will offer you 235 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Or more common, a 3.6 liter V6 engine that will offer you 276 horsepower and 266 pound-feet of torque. They all come standard with eight-speed automatic transmission. And even if I'm not really excited about both engines, uh, the gearbox here is really good. When you consider a 3.6 liter engine, uh, you have to know that with a proper tow hitch you can get up to 5,000 pounds towing capacity. So even if you're buying a, a smaller Atlas, it still would be able to pull a smaller boat. For better driving experience, we have a few driving modes. For example, first is snow, second is eco, third is off-road and fourth is custom off-road. You also can customize those modes and there's another button on the same knob right in the middle that will shift between Ica, normal, sport and custom. It's like we're creating one knob but wait a second, it's not an knob. We're just gonna add another button that will essentially do the same. You have blind spot monitor, adaptive cruise control, you have distance assist and those features are great but they all feel kind of dated, especially if you take a steering assist, for example. Right now, if you buy a vehicle for 25,000, you can get a better steering assist than you will see here. And across the entire lineup with every single VW, I should say they have to improve it. You can get this car with optional fender stereo and this big screen with this infotainment system also comes with features like VW CarNet. This is when you take your smartphone, download the app, pair it with your car and now you have remote control for your car using your cell phone. You can lock and lock the doors, you can locate the car, you can see even your driving score. I don't know about you, this is not something really important to me, but I have to say, they've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, both work great. Remember I said you can get some options and you can easily get this vehicle over 50k. Well, if you're gonna do that, you will see features like Volkswagen Digital Cockpit. It will replace this driver's dash and instead of analog tachometer and speedometer, you'll see the big giant screen 
that will allow you to have navigation, any sorts of information, a ton of settings to adjust and play with. And I saw this digital cockpit on other cars and I have to say it looks great. It's actually really functional. And if you're gonna use VW navigation system, the way that you see the guidelines, the way it looks, it's really good. Some things that you won't find elsewhere. Well, you have to buy a European car to see features like, let me give you an example, post-collision automatic braking system. This is something that you will see across the lineup in all the VW models. And I wish to see the features like this in every single car. But for some reason, only European cars got it. It works this way. If the car got into an accident, it will apply brakes to help you stop so you can avoid any additional damage to the vehicle. It will also unlock all the doors after the complete stop and going back to a VW car net, well, you can get a notification there. Let's talk about driving experience. Like I said, it feels like a bigger Atlas, even though they slammed the roof it still feels like a bigger, taller VW Atlas. I do believe they have the same suspension set. It's a little bit floaty and I really want to see something besides badges that will prove this car got more sporty feel. Inside fit and finish, uh, more or less VW. You got an idea. Nothing really premium, nothing really stands out. In the R line, you got a little bit different steering wheel. And I have to say, I like the new logo. Here's the new style logo by the horn. What I don't like, well, glove box. This thing is sticking out like somebody slammed it, jammed it, or VW put it together this way. Hmm. Giant panoramic sunroof looks beautiful. Overall, driving on freeways going like 60-70 miles an hour is pretty comfortable. We actually had a chance to spend a lot of time driving this car. And after this week, we're clocking 1,165 miles. And you all probably wondering, what's the gas mileage? See, the VW actually managed to get in trouble with all the emissions and things like that. So right now, when I would like to see the average gas mileage after I had a chance to drive it for over a thousand miles, I cannot do it. It shows me only average gas mileage for this current trip. So when I start the car this morning and I drove right now maybe 10, 20 miles, that's all I can see. It shows me 21.1 miles per gallon, but it's average economy only for this current trip. Come on, VW, stop it. I'm 100% positive they have some sort of a setting somewhere hiding, but I don't like this approach. Inside while driving, you get a lot of noise out of the windows, especially on the top portion, and I can hear quite a lot of noise out of the wheels. What's really surprising me, yes, we did put some miles on this car. And yes, we've got it with only 1,500 miles, brand new car. After we drove like 200, 250 miles between the gas stations, it did show me a check engine light. And surprise, surprise, I had my code reader. When I pulled up the code, it showed me P2099. And take a guess what it relates to. I mean, you can Google the entire code, but it basically tells you the computer found an issue with emissions, which will affect your fuel efficiency. And my question is, VW, are we over with this yet? Another funny part, uh, you buy a European car, so get ready, get ready for something that you never expect. I'm talking about automatic climate control. There is absolutely no way you can dial it in and make sure you're gonna stay comfortable. Well, for example, right now I have 75 degree setting instead of 72 and I'm still freezing. So you are either freezing or it's freaking hot. And like I said, it's not only VW. You buy a European car, get used to it. You know what's funny? We recently drove a new Golf and the little Golf is something affordable, not expensive. But that car had only USB Type-C, so the good news here, you got a regular USB, you can still plug your device and enjoy this Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. 
Something that you will be surprised to see when you're gonna press the button and open the lift gate, you will see a ton of cargo space. I don't know why you would ever need to fold the rear seats, but there you got plenty of space. The rear seats are spacious as well. So when it comes to taller people, even with this panoramic moonroof, I'm 6'2 and I have no problem and I have quite a few inches on top of me. And that's the only car where you might want to pull the seat higher because VW allows you to floor the seat to the ground. Take a look how much time it will take me to get downstairs. <laughs> And I'm still going. <laughs> That's it. So you can tell this car got some room. I do like the bright headlights and I do like the bright fog lamps. They're pointing left and right so when you're making a turn it's pretty easy to see through the turn. For the past week we had a lot of smoke in the San Francisco Bay Area. And that was actually a good test for the quality of air filter. I mean, take a look at these pictures. And for me, it wasn't a problem until you stop and open the door. You know, it's a brand new car. It got to the market just now. But with all pros and cons, it doesn't have this wow feeling. And maybe it's not a VW fault that we didn't hear much about this car. Maybe it's just the time we all live in. But let's sum up. If you're looking for Porsche on the budget, that could be actually a good option. But to be clear, not the performance, only style. It does look like an expensive Porsche Macan. It's definitely spacious. It's definitely got a lot of value when you're talking about base model. It's got this unique style with the lower roof that you probably won't find elsewhere with different manufacturers. But if you're gonna put extra money into the options, it might not be your best bet. So yes, go check it out. But please be really careful with the options. Every single week we do car reviews, motorcycle reviews, parts, gear. Make sure to click thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and watch the newest and coolest videos every single week as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.